The BMW M5 competition has had many mixed reviews from motoring journalists over the years. They've said things like the steering has no feel, the suspension is too stiff for UK roads, the car itself lacks personality. All valid criticisms, I'm sure. However, they do all come from highly regarded journalists who are used to the beluga caviar of the car world. What I want to know is what does the average schmuck, e.g. me, think? Let's get into it. My name's Tom, and you're watching Paragon Cars. Let's go. We're on TikTok, so if you want to see weekly updates, behind the scenes footage, and some funny stuff, click the link in the description below to follow us now. Now then, from a daily driver's perspective, this is the ultimate 5 Series. You have heated, ventilated, massaging merino leather sports seats that I have to say are some of the best in the game. Off the top of my head, I can't think of a more comfortable and supportive chair. In fact, the more you look around the interior, the more you'll notice it's much more set up for comfort than it is performance. Yeah, you have a carbon fibre roof, but you also have multiple scents to choose from, soft closed doors and enough leather to rebuild six cows. Even the rear seats have their own heating and climate control. Then the boot, it's large, the seats can fold down, and it even has extra cubby holes for stuff. All this extra stuff adds weight and means this BMW M5 weighs in at 1.9 tonnes. Probably closer to 2 once you add a couple of options like there are on this car. The thing is though, this car doesn't care about that. In fact, it doesn't even acknowledge it. That's because under the bonnet is a V8 with not one, but two twin scroll turbochargers. This means you have 625 horsepower and 750 Newton meters of torque flinging you down the road. It's hard to quantify just how fast this car is, so let me show you with the 30 to 70 Sprint. There's no way around it, this thing is a license taker. We have dethroned the Mercedes E63S from second place and have taken it with a time of 2.77 seconds. To gain even more perspective, that M5 went from 30 to 70 from now to now. For a totally stock car to be this quick is just mind bending. It really is a roller coaster on wheels. Anyway, now that I've regained consciousness, let's get on the road and play a game of how long can I keep my license. <laughs> Basically, up to the national speed limit straight away. You know what, down a little B road, this thing is a bit of a weapon. Right, M5 competition. Or is it? I mean, I've driven it for about two minutes so far, and other than the dash and a couple of buttons on the steering wheel, I don't really feel like I'm driving an M5, which I suppose is kind of a good thing depending on how you look at it. Steering is nice and light, car is comfortable. A lot of journalists said this was overly sprung for what it is, but I'm not feeling that. Going over speed bumps around town feels, you know, like an M Sport car, really. A bit stiff, but not uncomfortable. These seats are immaculate, though, I have to say. They just support you in every way you want. And the thing I like is they're capacitive as well. So if you touch like a button, it tells you what it's going to do, which is nice. Throttle pedal and brake pedal are well calibrated. One thing to keep in mind is if you go for the carbon ceramic brakes in this, apparently they're a bit grabby, according to Harry's Garage. But the regular brakes feel very well calibrated. We've got a hill hold assist as well. I mean, it feels very subdued. Honestly, I can barely even hear the V8. I mean, to me, it just sounds like there's some sort of engine going on under there. It doesn't sound like that sort of V8 like rumble you get with an AMG. 
Even the Audi RS6 is a bit louder than this on idle. So far, this is a bit un BMW. But it is very nice. Very nice to drive around town. As a daily driver, this would be fantastic. And the thing is, you do have over 600 horsepower on tap when you need it, which uh, we are definitely going to deploy a little bit later. But starting around town, it's nice. It's comfortable, it's quiet, there's no rattles. Suspension deals with little potholes very well. It doesn't jolt the cabin and it does feel special. You know, you've got nicer leather, you've got stitch dash, you've got suede headliner, and you've got ambient lighting, you know, you can get that in the normal five series. But the the uh, higher grade of leather is the main thing you notice in this. It feels very special to sit in. Steering wheel, a little bit too thick, but that's a BMW thing. You do get sort of used to it after a while, but I would like it if they went back to their old M Sport steering wheel. Uh, one of my 140i is a little bit thinner and it does just feel a little bit nicer to use. Anyway, parking this thing, this is long and wide. Regular 5 Series is just long. This is long and wide, which means you do need quite a lot of cameras to help you out. Steering lock is also a little bit less than a regular 5 Series, which means getting into spaces in one go is a little bit tricky, as you can see. You have to give yourself like an extra meter of room uh, compared to a regular 5 Series. And I do find myself having to sort of take one or two stabs at it. And as you can see, once we're in the space, go all the way to the back. That's pretty much as far back as I can go. Yeah. And you can see the front is actually still out the space. <laughs> and then getting out of the car once you're in a space, you've got enough room. It's just, you know, it's a big car at the end of the day. You just have to be a little bit more cautious. Anyway, we move on. Let's see what this thing is like coming out of a junction. I'm sure it's going to be not too slow. Okay. Start, stop. No, nope. okay, maybe not. And half throttle. Oh my god. <laughs> okay, I, I basically touched the throttle actually, and we went up to 30 pretty much instantly. That four wheel drive system in this is very effective at deploying the power. Now, of course, you can use the M2 button to put you into two wheel drive mode, but you can only do that with everything off, not even stability control on. So probably won't do that today. Um, for now, we're gonna leave it inefficient. There we go. And I'm gonna reset the trip computer and see what kind of MPG we can get on the motorway. Now, of course, if you're buying a car like this, you don't really care about the fuel consumption. However, this only has a 68 litre tank, which for a big performance car means you're not gonna be able to do a lot of miles on the motorway. BMW claim you can do 34 miles per gallon out of this thing on the extra urban cycle. Combined, you'll get about 26. And that means to a full tank of fuel, you're not getting a lot of miles out of it. And if you're trying to do long journeys in this thing, that can make it kind of annoying to live with. So we're gonna take it onto the motorway and see just exactly how inefficient it is. Right, let's reset our trip computer there. There we go. Anyway, as usual, before we do that, we're going to take it round a roundabout and try and deploy all of those ponies under the bonnet. Okay then, we're going to go for M1. I've set it up into everything in sports and MDM mode, but we're keeping the four-wheel drive system on for now. Let's see how this M5 handles. You can also whack the gearbox into, is that manual? Hard to tell with this thing. There's a lot of stuff going on with the infotainment. Let's see what happens. Oh my goodness. Okay, even with the four-wheel drive system on, it's quite leery. That was about a quarter of the throttle uh, I got through then before it started going sideways. Oh my goodness. See, I couldn't buy one of these because I would lose my license in about 30 minutes. That 
is effective at deploying its power, that's for sure. Give the brakes a little test. Yeah. However, I'm noticing one thing. It doesn't really sound like a V8. I mean, there's some V8 noises going on, but it's certainly not um, an M5 sound. I think my recommendation already might be to get an exhaust on this thing. If you were to buy one. Anyway, I'm getting carried away now. Let's go back into efficiency. There we go. And see if we can get 34 MPG out of this thing. Okay then, coming onto the motorway. In efficiency mode. Can't believe this thing has an efficiency mode, but here we are. It's comfortable, it's quiet, very subdued. We have BMW's overly intrusive lane departure warning, which basically just takes the steering away from you if you try and change lanes without using your indicator. Maybe they're trying to teach BMW drivers a lesson or two. And this is where the M5 is good. Continent crushing machine. You get the cruise control on and chill out. Yep, yeah, road noise is very low for a performance car. Wind noise, again, very low. Visibility is good. You've got nice big wing mirrors. Seats, unbelievably comfortable. You can heat them, you can cool them. You can get them to give you a hot stone massage. It's a fantastic daily driver, even though it is in competition trip. I do have to say, I'm not feeling the overly stiff suspension at all, actually. It feels perfectly comfortable. It's not fidgety. The only thing I'm noticing at the minute is the steering is a bit numb, I think, for an M car. You could do with a bit more feel. It feels like I'm playing a PlayStation game at the minute. I'm guessing you're going to have to be going silly speeds before you get any kind of feedback. Anyway, 20 miles on the motorway. Let's see what MPG we can get out of this thing. there was a bit of traffic coming up to the end of that run today uh, but I think that actually helped our MPG figure as we're now sitting at 28.5 miles per gallon which isn't 34 um, and I was kind of hoping we'd get at least 30 out of this thing it's impressive for you know it's an over 600 horsepower V8 but the fuel tank is just a little bit too small I think because at the end of the day, you're only going to get like 280 to 300 miles out of this thing. And that's just not quite enough. You know, if you could get like 350 on the motorway, that would get you sort of just like up to Scotland, just about. So it is a little bit annoying. Um, not the end of the world, though. Uh, and then in terms of like ride quality on the motorway, I did notice when you've got those little gaps, like little lines going across the motorway, you do get a little jolt into the cabin. But I'm splitting hairs, really. <laughs> it's like, you know, the, the E63S does it. The Audi RS6 just about does it as well. So they all do it effectively. It's just performance car things. I'm talking about performance car things, actually. Let's go do some performance car things. Right then, it's raining. So we're going to need to use that four-wheel drive system. Let's go into MDM mode. Gearbox is in the sporty setting. We're going to go for manual, I think. That's how this thing's meant to be driven. Let's see what this thing's like. Front end is just insane. <laughs> the level of grip. Oh my goodness. My face has come off. <laughs> ah! I can feel my license evaporating out my wallet. Don't swear. This car deserves swear words. It's it's very effective. Brakes as well, just barely even have to touch them. 
just monstrous. See if we can do a little sound check through here. Might be a bit too much wind noise. It delivers its power very differently to the Mercedes E63S. It is very much old school in the way it does that. Jesus Christ! Oh. It's weird. It's like between two and four thousand reps. You're not getting, you know, it, it's obviously quick, but it's not crazy fast. Then you hit five thousand and you just it's like another engine suddenly comes alive under the bonnet. Oh my god. This is brutal. Jesus. I cannot imagine what this thing is like in two-wheel drive mode. That's just stupid. Ow! It hurt me. I'm going to have to have my massage seat on, I think, to realign my spine. Wowzers. <laughs> this is... This is... Do you know what this is? This is disgusting. This is pure filth in a car. No one should be allowed to drive this. Not even me. Now, okay, let's get serious. A lot of journalists have said steering feel is too numb to a point where you don't know what the front end is doing. And I see where I see what they're getting at, but oh my god. I see what they're getting at. But it's not that bad. I think a lot of people are being overly critical. It's not unpredictable by any means. I mean, you need you need a racetrack to actually deploy all those horsepowers. I can't even rev this engine out without destroying what's left of my license. <laughs> The weird thing is, I'm not afraid of it. it. It's just so effective. Yet it's not blunt at the same time. It controls its mass well. Again, I'm not feeling that jitteriness. We're in the sportiest setting as well. And it does round off the bumps still. Oh, I can feel that massage seat realigning my scoliosis. This is one of those cars that really does leave you a bit speechless because you're just not expecting that amount of power, especially at the top end. You get above 5,000 and you think, okay, it's going to be, you know, quick, like an E63. And then it just suddenly gets this whole new wave of sheer grunt. It's like it turns from a V8 into the 812 Superfast. <laughs> you know, the V12 in the Ferrari. It's really strange. Like, low down, you give it a blip and it's kind of like, pretty quick. But, above that four and a half, five thousand RPM rev band, it just turns into a totally different engine. Totally different beast. Wow. Having this as a daily driver, I don't think you're ever actually going to use <laughs> all the power it's got. Okay, we're going to take it down a B-road now and see if I can use it. Okay, down a smaller B-road. Oh my god. GoPro is almost coming off my head. Okay, let me just, let me try and get second gear out of the way. keeps going. You think it's going to like let off a bit and it just doesn't. This is absolutely sad. 
savage. Oh my god. She's a fighter. Okay, will we reach 60 before the corner? I think the answer is yes. I think we could have reached 100 before the corner. <laughs> Wow, the front end is just so tidy. It's like warp speed, this thing. And the back end is always the first thing to go as well, that's what I'm noticing. Which I actually kind of like, I don't like it when I have to deal with under-searing cars like this. Because you don't get a lot of time to react. But this is typical BMW, I'm able to place it exactly where I want it still. I was scared, a lot of people were saying the steering wasn't that good, but it's good enough that I'm able to place it where I want it. Yeah, you have to hit the paddle at about 5,000, otherwise you hit the limiter. Lesson learned there. Exhaust that controls its mass well, and the four wheel drive system is much more predictable than the one in the Range Rover SVR. It doesn't have that snappy feeling to it, it's very progressive. <laughs> She's a fighter! What a beast! In conclusion, I just want to help the average driver understand the true power of this car. I imagine many of you have driven VW Golf R's, maybe even have been lucky enough to drive a BMW M4 or a Mercedes C63. You put your foot down and you feel a nice push as the driver, but nothing untoward, nothing you can't control. This BMW M5 is not that. The second you put your foot down, your brain is 20 feet away from the boot of the car playing catch up. You are merely along for the ride at this point, warping from corner to corner. That's the feeling you simply don't get in many cars. Of course, you could stage three the Golf R and technically be just as quick as the M5, but it's not necessarily the overall acceleration that gives this true feeling of powerlessness. It's the way the M5 deploys its power with such efficacy that really overwhelms the senses. In short, if you want that utterly addictive feeling, the M5 competition is a fantastic choice. Just get an exhaust, and then you might be able to tell just how fast you're going. As always, I hope you enjoyed this review. If you did, give it a like, and why not subscribe? As not only can you see more content like this, you can see everything we have for sale. Which as of today, still includes this mind-bending machine. My name's Tom, and you've been watching Paragon Cars. I'll see you on the next one. Goodbye.